Right, so Avak, whom is on the roster so far? Is it Zangiri in there? I don't believe a Zangiri is in here, actually. But this is as things stand, okay? The world is, well, the world. Um, this is the Geoscape. It's currently paused. Um, this right here is a mist outbreak, and it's kind of spreading out from this location. It moves much faster across the water and then gradually overland from the coastlines. Places under this, very bad. Havens under it, extremely, extremely in danger. Um, again, havens are something that there aren't many of. Uh, let's see. Are there any other outbreaks around the... This is most, most curious down there. Most curious. Very curious. Um... There are various bases that I could reactivate across the globe. Oh, there's another outbreak. That's a bit of a pain in the backside, though, for me to get there. Oh, yeah, I think I, I, think I actually uh, spotted that during the first stream. I was like, ah, oh, crap. The easiest way for me to get there, because you'll see this ring over here. This is kind of the operational range of my, of my um, uh, troop carrier. I have to stop and refuel at places, and it can kind of piggy bank a great distance, but it has to be able to get between two points of interest in this much range. And uh, so to get over there is most likely I'm going to have to find my way ar around here, cross over Alaska, and then go down through North America in order to get to anything that gets messed up over there, which is going to be hard. Uh, but for those who needed a quick recap, giant... Egg fell out of the sky. It's called Mount Egg. I really hope that this is not to scale. But considering it's called Mount Egg, I am concerned that it is. More concerned am I of what's inside. Because in the cinematic when that landed, it was cracking. I am concerned. Very. Uh, in fact, let me let me see. Is there anything in here, Law? Uh, there's loads of information here. I've not actually read through this, but we might at some point. Uh, I've got various other information. We've we've done various things here and there. Basically, we've been trying to. We've met the uh, people of New Jericho, led by Tobias West. Sort of a. I don't know how to how to describe them really. I, I feel dictatorship is probably accurate, but also possibly on the strong side. Um, they do seem to be a very militarist old ways, but mm, Tobias West, from what I can understand, was was basically a, an, a, an eccentric billionaire in the world before the collapse. And when it collapsed, uh, kind of kind of formed a cult of personality around himself and is very much humans first and uh, very tech focused. If I was to liken this, if, if you're at all familiar with um, the Supreme Commander kind of mythos, these are very, very much the, uh, <laughs> the, the, typical, the typical humans with uh, their, their philosophy and how to deal with problems is apply more guns to your tanks. That will solve the problem for you. As opposed to, you know, the Cybrans being ultra high tech, Heidi Heidi, free ourselves from from the the master's whip of those scallywag humans over there, and let's go build the perfect cyber utopia somewhere else. And, you know, the uh uh No, it's not the Seraphim. What what, what are they? The Aeon. Who are yes, aliens are good and they've taught us a fantastic new religion. We should be peaceful. Except to the Cybran and the UEF because they are scallywags and not peaceful. Thus, we must be very violent to them. A little bit odd, but, you know. We've also met the Disciples of Anu, who are quite happy with us. They are very much... I believe this is their leader, which says a lot. Um, the Pandora virus, as you probably already worked out, mutates people. They... Now, it's the interesting thing about the 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 Disciples of Anu is it's very easy for you to be like, oh, well, they're just some sort of weird, you know, death-worshipping cult. They're not, actually. They embrace the mutation. They feel the mutation is very, um, is very important for human adaptation. 
they they feel that humanity had gone down uh, a dead end path prior to the collapse, and that's why it collapsed. Um, there's uh, there's pseudo religious tones in, in, in you know it, it more or less is straight up a cult. However, it's an interesting one because they don't worship the virus. They are not some sort of ah uh, you know bow down to the, the the Pandorans, which are the the you know the alien entities that the crab people coming out of the out of the oceans. Uh, they very much see it as an obstacle. They they consider the Pandorans a challenge to overcome, to prove that humanity is worthy of being given the chance to adapt and move forward. They see the mutations as progress. They don't see it as some sort of, I don't know. Uh, I'm still unclear on them, but it, it's, it's definitely got more nuance to it than, than, you know, Death Cult, which I was a little bit worried about the the first the first uh, couple of times that I interacted with them, but it does seem that they're going a different route. It seems like there is actually sense to it. It's like yeah, you know, the exalted promises salvation. Basically, all of the factions are around some sort of leader or focus on the way to survive, and everyone's flocking to them because they feel, oh well, this is the best way to survive. Those who follow Tobias West feel that yeah, we'll just build up a, a regimented military. Um, complex and and we will we will have strict laws and and ethics will be maintained and humanity will come first and we'll put things right and we'll 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 purge the the enemies without and within etc etc the disciples of Anu are very much the old ways are why we're in this mess we must adapt we must adapt biologically and spiritually and then the other major faction which we haven't yet met are Sanhedrin who are true like absolute true democracy um so as in there, there's not representative democracy it's true democracy everyone votes on every um topic and every decision to be made um and they are looking to use advanced technology to build a new future that is better than the one we had before and in some ways to uh try and coexist with the changes but they're not looking to mutate they're not looking to you know embrace the the virus as the disciples of Arnold do more of a utope a technological utopia i feel but we're slowly making friends with them they want me to <laughs> sabotage a sanhedrin haven they want me to sabotage a disciples of arno haven uh, i'm gonna say no uh, I do not want to unmake my friendships. Thank you. Uh, we've got manufacturing going on. Uh, we're building various things. We're currently building. Uh, we've managed to reverse engineer because we are Phoenix Point. We're a uh, kind of extra governmental body that existed to combat the threat of the Pandora virus and other such, you know, paranormal problems. Uh, well, maybe not. Well, paranormal is probably the right term, but less ghosts and more aliens. Um, we have our own gear and we have our own research facilities and we're researching bunches of stuff right now. Um, but each haven also does their own research and has tech that kind of embodies their philosophy. And one of the things that we've discovered is the... Bulldog uh, Assault Rifle 50, which is a new Jericho Gorse Assault Rifle. It's better than ours, our Ares AR-1. I feel the Bulldog is a better gun than this, and we've managed to reverse engineer it after picking up a couple of, of specimens from various places from uh, new Jericho operatives. And so we're now building our own, so that's going to slowly upgrade. And we'll probably do this with all kinds of tech of all of the factions and so on and so forth. Um... We have got an Air Force, but I don't have one yet. Um, I, I don't believe our current vehicle is capable of, of air combat. This is added by the DLCs. Uh, it's going to be an interesting one. We can build all sorts of different things. I even think you're able to grow airplanes at some point with the right tech. I don't... I We're... we're touching on the stuff that I've only kind of seen screenshots and I'm drawing assumptions from. So please don't quote me on that. But as for personnel, since it has been asked... Uh, oh, actually, we've got a... Did we actually... 
Oh, yes. Yes, I do believe that we have uh, managed to... I think this is a new Jericho APC. And we were able to free it when we were in a mission towards the end of the last stream. So we now have uh, basically a little tank to bring along with us, which is great. Uh, we've got five peeps. Anubis, Brithnoth, Buttersray, Swift Squirrel, and Megasoon. They are all great. Avak, grow airplanes, you mean raising really, really big birds? Uh, I, I really don't know, but I've got... I, I, I think less birds and possibly more sky whales, but something like that. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Uh, this is our base. We build it up. We construct it as we see fit. We're currently building an extra research lab, an extra fabrication plant, and an extra power generator. The power generator, probably we don't need. Uh, in fact, I'm a little bit sad that I built that. Uh, but it's almost built now. So we'll probably reserve these for some high power requiring items, I'm going to say. More than likely. Um, maybe even just more research stuff. But I want at least one training plant. So that anyone that I leave here will automatically gain experience points whilst stationed here. But there's other stuff that we'll be able to build as well, and we probably will want to build it. Uh, we'll see how it goes. We're, we're restricted on space. I don't know if we're ever going to be able to clear that up. There are other bases around the map, though. There's uh, one down here, for example. Uh, and I believe that we're already building this one up. We uh, we opened this one. We've got a satellite uplink being built, living quarters, an energy grid. Then we're going to want to build a med bay so that we can station um, people here and they can rest, recuperate. And then we're going to have a couple more building spots. And the, the idea is we want to massively upgrade our production capabilities, our research capabilities, but there are going to be lots of other bits and bobs. Um, with the DLC, I believe there's stuff like cybernetics and all kinds of awesome stuff. According to Reddit, we can name the truck. <gasps> well, the truck. Coon. <laughs> what if it wants to be Truck Chan? Maybe, maybe it's Truck Senpai. <sighs> However, we'll come back to that in a moment. But as of the last stream, we've run a couple of missions now. Our personnel are, uh, they're getting decent level fours. Four, uh, three level fours, two level threes. If we want to have a quick look at their actual skills. Um, I've grabbed a couple of skills. They are max speed. Max speed there as well. Max speed there. I could actually pick up something else if I really wanted to. Um, not quite max speed yet on Swift Squirrel. Mega soon. Yeah, we're, we're getting there. We're very much getting there. Oh, we can custom. Oh. What? <laughs> Is is fancy just a case of like yeah it's it's metallic so fancy ah so bling I love that it is actually called fancy that is amazing oh my god I can't even. Yeah, when you decide camo is for scrubs. No armor, only fists run. That's that's what this is. Level one, gold gold paint, so you stand out. Always always being human. Never never being hollow. One hundred percent. Killing crabs with style. Uh, with style, yeah. That is a goal it's a blinged out armadillo. That's not though. Because we lose the two-tone effect, and come on, everyone knows we want the two-tone effect. However, that being said, oh wow, I can give it different. <gasps> can I? Can I put equipment in here and then people can just pick it up? Could I use this as a as a resupply point? Ooh, now that is ultra awesome. Hmm. May 
have to think about that. Uh, what was the color scheme that we went for, though, in the end? It was 8 and 10. Primary is 8, secondary is 10. Okay. Well, we definitely need our armadillo to, to uh, have the same thing. Primary is 8. And secondary is 10. So nice and, and dark. There we go. Phoenix point it is. Although there is the, an argument to be made for yellow or orange. You know, for flames, but... And there is no particular reason why we couldn't have a little bit of everything. I think we went with digital camo on, on the peeps. Did we not? A future planner, thank you very much for the 32 months. The A power of two. Does the truck have an AI, though? I, I would have hoped so. I like to imagine that this is the AI right there. <laughs> Just kind of watching the world. But yeah, that, that's, that's amazing. All right, well, we need to uh, start things off, I guess. And why not start things off by naming Truck Chan? As per last stream, it's going to be keyword giveaway. And... There we go. Hashtag, hashtag Truck Chan in chat if your name would like to be thrown in to the offering. There you go. <sighs> right, let's cover some of these backseat passes. From the last... VOD, don't shy from using dash and other abilities that cost willpower. Opening creates a map-wide will point recovery. We'll get it back. Yeah. No, thank you very much for that, Abarash Kampachi. I've actually received quite a lot of um, quite a lot of advice in the comments already, even though I've only got three videos out, and I really, really am very thankful for that. Very thankful. Alright, we're going to need some naming games. The name should be Truck Chan for all the isekai potential. I mean, we could go with that, actually. All right, we're going to roll it. Five, four, three, two, one. Bemble, 68. We are going to be going with Bemble. Well done, Bemble. Thank you ever so much. Indeed, Lee. All right. Let's go ahead and get you all named Bamble. Thank you very much to Road Train for prepaying that naming game. Deal for audio. All right. But since you can actually carry spare gubbins, I totally think you should carry some spare gubbins. Maybe some extra ammo, too. Just in case, you know. There we are. Okay, that base is going to take some time to get finished. And we've got this bloody thing over here, which I'm terribly f worried about. Uh, we've also got a quest called the Alchemist. Free a geneticist held by the disciples of Anu for the leader of Longinus Point. I believe this is Longinus Point. No, this is Science Retreat. Is that Longinus Point? Where's Longinus Point? Not sure where it is. Oh no, there we are. Why? Because uh, you've got... It seems that there are independent havens as well. We, we already kind of know that there are independents because there are independent units that we've got equipment from. But we're going to have to make our way over here somehow. Uh, one big way of, of that would be to here, but I don't know. We probably do have enough that we'd be able to get there. No. It would already show us if we could. That's a shame. All right. Well, generally speaking, I'm going to say that our focus needs to be on areas around the mist to try and get them out of the mist as quickly as we can. Who's going to be the Manticore? Can we... Oh, that's a good point. Can we... Oh, we can already name the Manticore as well. <gasps> okay. Okay. So, since we've already got a role, I guess we can just do another one. 
Uh, or we could, if I had thought about it. Instead, I was a bit of a dumb. Uh, so, well, you know what? Let me let me quickly have a look. Uh, what does it look like when someone... Hmm. I wonder if this will work. Could someone redeem a naming game quickly? Did that add you? It did not. Hmm. I was hopeful that it would. Let me have a look. One more. I, I swear to goodness I am not I'm not trolling you. I will refund these points straight away. But just try one more. I want to see if I can have. No, it doesn't. Okay, I'm gonna refund those points then. Uh I wanted to see if I could make it so that. Anyone who redeems a naming game is automatically entered into the raffle, thanks to Nightbot, but it doesn't seem that you can. A shame. Truly, truly it is. Uh, okay, so this one will be... Um, uh, hashtag Jetkun. There you go. We'll find out... What jet? Uh, what the Manticore's name is in a moment, though. But one of these days, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to f stop being lazy and actually finish the uh, the the chat bot, so I can make that a lot more streamlined. Uh, currently, we're waiting on satellite uplink, fabrication plant, research lab, manufacturing. The Bulldog AR will take 15 hours. The energy generator at this base will take 15, and researching Havement recruitment protocols is another four-hour project. I am going to go ahead and I'm going to build the training facility here. You are low on tech, which is the rarest resource to find. Here are some suggestions to relieve your short shortage. Trade. Visit havens with the trade uh, the tech resource symbol and trade food for materials or tech. Steel. Visit a haven with the tech resource symbol and conduct a steel resource mission. Warning, this will antagonize the controlling faction. Scavenge. Explore and locate more scavenging sites. Scrap. You can scrap items or demolish base facilities to recover tech resources. Or rewards. Oh, okay. Well, we're going to try and get that one up and running. Um, because having a training facility means that whenever we're resting and recuperating, we're also earning experience while there. Right, let's uh, see who got it. Boom. Shell Mac. Fantastic. Actually sounds like a good manticore name. Would I be able to trust the mods to uh, clear off the naming game list for me by one name? There we go. And next... You know what? I'm gonna... Should we... Rename this base? I think we should. Yeah, we're just going to roll with the same that we had there. So, boom. Tater J2000. This is too close to Tater. So, this shall be. It's not ta Tater Crater. It's Tator Crater. Okay? It had to be. All right? It had to be. Some nice, nice uh, game crossover there between the previous streams. Uh, I think Lady Shelab may be uh, a little bit engrossed with Raft, so I shall clear off the two naming games there. Thank you ever so much. All right, there we go. So we've got Phoenix Point and then Tater Crater. Actually, I, I'll remove the hyphen since we don't have it with Phoenix Point. Can I? There we are. Doesn't show me the cursor, but that's fine. Sorry, it doesn't pause. No, that's okay, Lady Shelab. I completely understand. It's not a problem at all. Stupid shark. <laughs> right, okay. So, with all of the important stuff done, i.e. the renaming, we need to start getting out there and searching. Uh, we've covered an abandoned vehicle there. Can we have a go back to it? I think once they're clear, they're clear. But let's get down here to Simon's Retreat and see what there is to find there before moving on a little bit more. There's going to be a Synedrian base around here somewhere. I'm fairly certain there will be, anyway. 
But we've got a an objective here. Oh, actually. What is it that we're low on? Oh, you're low on stamina. Uh, I forget how stamina affects... I think once you're lower than 20% of your stamina, they start to receive combat penalties. So we could do one more mission. Oh, it's Tato RJ, because I live in Rio de Janeiro. Ah, right, I get you. But I love Tato Crato. Okay, well, we'll keep Tato Crato then. I'm glad you approve. Once you're out of stamina, you lose an action point. Ah, okay. Oh, Shalmak wanted another name. Instead of my name, can you call it Honeybee? It's more cute. Sure, okay. Well, we'll do that once we get out of this mission. Sorry for... Actually, you know what? I don't think I need to jump in there yet. So you want it to be Honeybee. Usually I don't because it gets a little bit obnoxious, especially in games with a lot of renaming, if everyone can just select another name. But because you wanted it to be called something with a bee in it, and I happen to really, really like bees, I will allow. Favoritism is the best force sort of ism. There we go. Honeybee, it is. Right, let's get back. The Apico Express. <laughs> oh, I love Apicos. Truly, it's amazing. Right, let's start this mission. Our operatives have reached Randolph Sime III's private retreat, where we may be able to find additional information that may help us decipher his notes and make sense of his activities. However, our scans indicate an enemy presence in the area. Oh, no. The only re I, if the names are you know few and far between, it's not so bad, Shalmac. Uh, so I'm, I'm usually okay with it in that regard. But sometimes it does get way over the top, especially when like if you're playing Dwarf Fortress and a migrant wave is like forty names long, and you're like, I I don't care what you what you want it to be. I'm just going to use your Twitch name because. I can just roll all 40 of them and copy and paste them and then we can carry on with the game. Or I can spend an hour waiting for everyone to let me know what they want. Hey, Malakin! I used to work in a museum that had a live glass beehive. It was fascinating. That sounds amazing. All right. Okay, so we can immediately see some scallywags. All right, yo. Man. Symes. You've got a swanky retreat, my friend. I'm going to be honest. Look at this. Got your own own kind of weird hydroponic things going on. I I don't know. Out in the out in the uh the forest. I like it. I like it a lot. Some sort of classy Decoration. You know what? Maybe that's a little bit more overgrown, or maybe it's some sort of aqua, um, some sort of uh, like algae, and, and well, no, it's got hanging vines, so it's not going to be algae. Still, it could it could be more food there. I see that your retreat is full of work stuff, and then up here, full of more work stuff, and then up here, y your bed is a couch. Um, Sims, we need we need to have have a discussion about about work life balance, my dude. Truly, we do. I know that's that's ridiculously hypocritical coming from me, but we have to have this talk. It's not a talk that any of us find enjoyable, but it's a talk that we all need to have eventually. Targets. All right. Okay. Let's have a look then. Who has got the best sight? Well, my heavy. You do have a look on him. You do have a look on them. I kind of want to get up. What we need to do, our only objective is to get to the journal. Heavy Madude might be the best person to do that straight away. Also, from up here, I'll have a very good view on what's around. Um... 
Well, you're not going to do anything this turn, so it, I guess just getting up there would be fine. Yes. Yes. On this vantage point, what can you see? Nothing new. Okay. Duly noted. Uh, right. A sniper only has sight on you. Do I really need cover here? Currently, I would probably... Who did you see? Oh. Huh. All right. I'm on the Say draw back. Ready. And you do the same. Spotted another one. Another Triton over there. Okay. Ready, willing, and able. You know what? I'm thinking I might spend the turn to get my sniper into a position from whence they are able to do some real serious damage on the next couple let's of rounds. Go. So let's just go. Now the beautiful thing here is because of my overwatch perk, which removes the cost of overwatch by one point, and a pistol shot only requires one point for a sniper, I can fire it for free. So every sure turn they can do. stop and take a shot. Now, as for you. I'm prepared. Let's have a look Eyes what we peeled. can do. Not a great shot there. Even worse. I could let them come to me to take a better shot. Since you're not going to be able to, to really do anything particularly impressive at this point. I think I might use dash to try and move around a little bit. If I can. I could probably make it almost all the way up to this door. I could use it twice if I really wanted to. Uh, yeah, because I can use it twice and then still attack. And again. I need to use their willpower abilities a lot more. Right, from this point, have you got a decent shot? You don't really. That's fine. The trees are kind of in the way. But that's fine. I'll go into Overwatch. Hopefully, you're going to approach. I don't want to fire on anything that is further away than this, so that we've got some decent I accuracy. My eyes open. Same here, I would say. Area covered. And same over here. Area covered. I would like you to have Overwatch. There. And that's it for our turn. See what happens. Let them come to us. None of the enemies that I saw had ranged weapons, so... Like I'm a lot happier letting them approach. Bloody tree! That's a gorse rifle! <sighs> That's it. We now know for sure. The plants are in cahoots with the Pandorans. Cahoots, I say! That's a bit better. They've been alerted, so now they're going to try and converge. Prior to that, they weren't alert of our presence. So they didn't know necessarily where to go. From what I understand... Well, I don't know. Oh, there we are. Now it's alerted. So I'm going to say that there isn't some sort of communication going on between them. Just because one has seen something doesn't mean the others have yet. Let me see what our friend down below can do. 
Got a shot there, shot there, shot very far away over there. Alright, we're gonna aim for you. There you go. And sure, let's go for you. Just take out the torso. Bad luck. We hit the pincer, unfortunately. Finish them off, please. Headshot only. So the pincer is technically a weapon, not part of their body. So it doesn't do much damage to Hitler. Nice. Taking out a leg. Always good. Right. As for you, how much will points have you got? You've only got three will points. It's a shame. Because if I use that, you would be in panic territory. I'm going to relocate. From here, I've got a decent shot. Okay, actually not bad. But they will regenerate, sadly. Now, as for my heavy, um, I'm kind of thinking, head down, grab the research notes. And then come out and start playing. What did we see? Okay. Nothing too I'm on the important. Activate the object. Right. And then secure the retreat. Now, if we have a look at the info here, and this is one of the things I really like about this, I can have a look and see that because they're bleeding, unless their regeneration can stop that, it's completely nullifying their regeneration. I don't know if they can regenerate completely disabled limbs. If they can, then they can effectively stop their own bleeding. Standing by. But let's hope they can't do that. Now let's make our way out. Is there a ladder on that side? Hopefully not. Ooh, hello. There's someone right by that door. Right here. They could go all the way through and kind of pop up on our allies. That would not be something I would enjoy. Let's finish you. But there gives me the most likelihood of hitting a shot. That was a good kill. It was a good kill, I agree. And let's set that up down there just to see if they move through. Whatever that is, is moving fast. And hasn't gone for them. Curious. Very curious. Alright, we've got one, two enemies down here. Right. Well, have you got sight on them? No, not really. Well, I'm going to have to move no matter what, but you've got full will points, so I could just move right up next to them, gun them down, and maybe from this position I'd also see what's in there. Pushing right. on. Field execution time. Enemy in visual range. Dodge this. <laughs> right, they're panicked because they've lost so many will points now. You okay. should have a bunch more will points because of all the kills. Actually, no, you haven't got more will points. Why? I'm prepared. Is it only when they? Oh, it's only when they get a kill they gain will points. Right, 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 right. Okay, I understand. I'm prepared. I understand. Uh, well, I may as well move in. Because if I get the kill, then Rain I get the will points back. Hi. Uh, I could hit you in the head from behind right now. I just shot you in the head from under your armpit. How embarrassing to be you. Uh, however, I'm still shy one point. So I'm going to nope out of that room. No rest for the wicked. Deep. Don't know if you're going to get any action in this fight, but um, got war cry. All enemies within ten tiles have their action points reduced by two for the turn. Be I right could there. pull that off. 
And it should hit whoever is down there. <sighs> I hope it caught them. I don't know how, how much this considers a tile. So it, it might be just out of range. But hopefully that, that caught them. Right, draw back from the from that area so you've got, at least got good view of what's ready. around you. I could have you drop down. In fact, I could have you go inside. Huh. Um. Yeah, let's head on over here. I see them. There we go. Now I know what you are. You're panicked. Okay, good. Oh, actually, yeah, you did get affected by Warcry. By the looks of it. Yeah. All right, perfect. What kind of shot have I got? I might take your arm off, I might not. We'll see. Oh, wow. That was actually impressive. Well played. Very well played. Oh, important note, it said reduced action points to two, not by two. Right, okay, thank you very much for that. Okay, 131, 115, 71, 57, and 26. The total experience points available were 400, and that got divided based on the things that they did in the mission. Not bad at all. As the world fell apart around us, it was difficult not to feel guilty. Some chose to be proactive and fight, but not me. I came here instead. My best weapon is my mind, and I need silence to put it to work. The history of the Phoenix Project is a complex tapestry. In Russia, Turkey, Britain, Spain, not one unbroken lineage, but a tangle of organizations, each passing the torch to the next with only one goal to protect the human race. But protect it from what? Did they know about the Pandora virus? And if so, how? The answers are out there. So much has been investigated and collected and analyzed, but it's all scattered, lost. I don't know if it's possible to track it all down, but I have to try. There's only one thing I'm sure of. I can't stay here anymore. Okay, there we go. 